Dear viewer, welcome back to another episode of the show Breath of Praise. We want to thank God because we believe you've been following us. If you haven't, just take time, go back and watch the previous episodes through the YouTube channel Hope Channel Kenya. I'm your host, Steve B. Konyaga, standing in place of Caroline Okoth, who will also be joining us still part of this amazing show as they will be singing a piece of music. Allow I introduce the amazing panelists who are joining me in discussing this epic journey as we study more about steps that we ought to make and efforts in this Christian journey. Mm -hmm. On my left is our brother, George. Kindly say hi to the viewer. Hello viewer, I'm so glad you're here with us today. Karibu sana. Asante sana. At the piano we have Enoch. Welcome again. Thank you Enoch. Next to George is our sister Karen Otado. Greetings. Thanks for joining our fellowship. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. We have our brother Darius. Karibu sana to this episode. Be blessed. Thank you. You are being blessed. And today we have another, a new uh, panelist uh, joining us. And this is my beautiful wife, Winnie Kerubonyaga. Please say hi to the viewer. Hello, viewer. Thank you for joining us as we study about Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Winnie. You know, God said it is not good for man to be alone. <laughs> and today we are together as a family and we are happy to serve as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, next to me on my right, we have the Njirus, mm -hmm. uh, who's also my brother and my sister. Uh, Debbie, please say hi. Hi, viewer. We are glad you got an opportunity to join us today. Thank you, Justice. Hi friend, uh, glad to see you today. I'm also very happy that I have my brother and my sister here. <laughs> it's a happy no, no, day. We, we, we can relate to how Helen feels. <laughs> yes, 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 when yes, yes. Yeah, now I can. Helen, Helen, I'm feeling the way Helen. Yeah, feels. it is a privilege when we serve God as a family. Yeah. I'll yeah. invite my wife Winnie to lead us in the opening prayer. Let's pray. Our Father who art in heaven, Lord, as we study, your word, we ask that you teach us and show us your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Yes, we've sought God's guidance to show us the way, but for the benefit of you viewer, if you're joining us today, I want us just to recap the last steps that we have studied in this journey. Mm -hmm. I think I'll start with my brother Darius. Mm -hmm. What first two steps did we consider in this journey of getting to know Christ better? All right, so the first step is accepting God's love for us. Yes. And the second step is realizing our need. You know, we are sinners, so realizing our need for Jesus Christ in our life. Mm. Thank you. The third step, anyone of us? Yes, George. Um, we were talking about repentance. Yes. And then fourth, we're going to confession. Yes. The first uh, repentance is basically turning away. Mm -hmm. And then a con confession is taking accountability. Taking accountability. Yes. So those are the first four steps. Step number five and six, Justice? I was about to say concentration. <laughs> <laughs> concentration. Yes. There's concentration. Uh, that is uh, giving your everything to God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then the next one uh, is uh, faith and acceptance. Yes. Because the moment you accept Jesus, then uh, some arrows will be thrown to you by yeah. Satan. Mm -hmm. But you need to have faith that uh, God loves you mm -hmm. and you accept accepted you are a child of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. We're all children of God and we've been invited to concentrate. So please <laughs> focus and let's go walk this journey together. Step number seven, eight and nine. Any one of us? Step number seven mm -hmm. is the test of discipleship. Yes. Because even as we walk in this journey, there's a time we need to be tested. Mm -hmm. yes. But when we are tested, you know for sure that the Lord it's is also. on our side. Yes. Great. Step number eight and nine. Step number eight, we looked into growing, mm -hmm. uh, growing up as a Christian, and we likened uh, the Christian growth to growing of a seed to actually producing fruit. Mm -hmm. And then step number nine, we looked at the work and the life, and we started at looking at you know how Jesus Christ yes. lived mm -hmm. and following his example. Mm -hmm. Very true. And today we are looking at the tenth step. And what step is this? A knowledge of God. A knowledge of God. <laughs> okay. A knowledge of God. Dear viewer, it is such a privilege to study God's word. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I want to invite the beautiful trio to sing a song of praise. All things bright and beautiful. Mm -hmm.
Thank you, the trio, for that amazing piece of music. And maybe just let us now understand, in getting to know more about God, the many things that speak to us, but I want us just to borrow from that song, all things bright, bright and beautiful. And beautiful. Mm. What is this that is bright and beautiful that gives us a better understanding about God? It look at me as if you want me to answer. <laughs> <laughs> so let me, let me start with that one. I mean, uh, there's, there are many things that God created. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the creation account yes. and the epitome of God's creation was not man. <laughs> it mm -hmm. was when God now created the woman. Yes. So when I look at my beautiful wife, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it speaks to me of how gentle and tender God is. Yes. And uh, I mean, so nature, nature speaks in volumes of God's amazing love. Very true, yeah. nature. George? Yes, um, there's, there's so much in nature. Yes. But I, I was really caught by the, the, the last stanza they sang mm -hmm. that, that actually praises God for giving us eyes, eyes mm -hmm. yeah. to witness this yeah. beauty. Mm -hmm. And um, I know there, there are some of us uh, believers who cannot see blind, mm -hmm. physically blind, and others who are not able to perceive the world as we do. Yes. But imagine they still somehow experience the beauty. Very true. God did not create beauty um, for it to be hidden, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And he allows us to experience beauty. And I think that's very, very um, telling of what kind of God he is. Yeah. Very true. And seeing that all that you are studying, uh, dear viewer, is based on scripture, I'll invite you to consider the book of Genesis chapter 1, where we have the account of the history of creation. And we find that God created the heavens and the earth and all that we see. Mm. And he did that in six literal days. Mm. And on the seventh day, he got to rest from all the labors mm. and he found beauty mm. in all that he'd created. And it's interesting to know that in all these days upon creation, he said it was evening and morning, the first day, mm. and so on up to the sixth day. Mm. And he found beauty for he said, all was what? Was, was good, good, okay, in his eyes. So let's talk more about knowing God through nature. 
What more lessons do we get from nature in a world that is full of many contradicting theories and positions? You know, many believe that, you know, some say God never created, but can we really know God through nature? And if so, how do we know God through nature? Any one of us? Yes, Karen. Let me bring out a principle. Think of when you're creating something, say a piece of art for the artists, music uh, for the people who compose. There's always an aspect of your personality and character and inclination yes. in what you're creating. Okay. Um, I will definitely know a piece of music written by Darius mm -hmm. or Enoch mm -hmm. because I will see them in it. Mm -hmm. The same way as God was creating, um, his character and the person who he is mm -hmm. is seen in his creation. Yeah. Um, Obviously, when sin came, it marred, mm -hmm. and yet even with sin, it's that beautiful, and we can still oh, see his character in its not full beauty. Mm -hmm. It's still a Tainted. bit blurry. Yes, yes. But I wanted to bring out the principle that he put himself, the, there was his character mm -hmm. in, that, in nature, in creation. Very true. So I'd say that nature are God's fingerprints. Mm. You know, we are so unique. Everybody has an identifier through the fingerprint. Mm. So God is seen through nature. Mm. Okay? Perhaps, right. perhaps yes, I can make it just a bit clearer. Mm. Um, think about it this way. What would have happened if God created the fish before he created the sea? Mm -hmm. The fish would, ha would have nowhere to be on. Yes. If he created the land animals before yes. the land was separated from the sea, they would drown. Yeah, I mean, true. he is such an organized yeah. God. So yes. even from the creation account, we see a God who's thinking forward, mm -hmm. a God who's organized, yes. who does not randomly do things. Everything mm -hmm. is by cost. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of it all, as we discovered earlier in the show, mm -hmm. is that everything led up, and that's why humanity is created last. last. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, Very true. so that humanity is brought into a space of beauty. Mm. Very true. Yes. Yeah, so God lay a foundation, mm. everything in order, so that then everything it was a perfect jigsaw, mm. no confusion. Yes. Yes. Okay. Maybe we can take it further. Apart from nature, how else does God speak to us, or how best can we have this understanding of who God is? Through His Word. Through mm. His Word. Yeah, Very true. We, Proceed. We are privileged to have this wonderful book that is full of lessons and examples of people who went before us mm -hmm. and managed to you know live a godly life mm -hmm. and yeah so god is yeah god is revealed mm -hmm. yeah very well um through his word and what what do we call his word is it the spoken word is it a text that we get off the shelf what is this word that we are referring to the written word. The written word, yes. which is the Bible. Yes. The Holy Scripture, the Holy scripture mm. yes. And I think there's a verse that talks about the scripture, yeah, the scripture being inspired by God, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Which verse is that? You have it? Yes, we have it. Yes. We have the verse from Second Timothy, mm -hmm. chapter 3, mm -hmm. from verse 16. Mm -hmm. I'll read, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness. Great, yes, so all scripture, mm. right Enoch? I, I feel you, there's something that you want to comment about scripture. Um, but it has been said in that oh, verse, but yes. I'll just say John 1.1 1, 1 also has, uh, in the beginning there was, was the word. Yeah, the word, and the word was God. 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 The word was with God. So when we refer to the scripture, yes. we're actually referring to the, uh, like God now, we understand more of him mm -hmm. from this. So there's a very, it's like a tie mm -hmm. so that we understand that the Bible is not something separate mm -hmm. from, or, from what Jesus is or, mm -hmm. or what we mm -hmm. understand of who God is. Yes. So we just learn of God inside here. It's, this, it's like communing. It's communing. Yes, yes. Yeah. I don't yes, want to, to tie in this with uh, Ephesians chapter 6 mm -hmm. on the arm of God. Yes. Uh, the word of God is one is part of that armor. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to see the, the verse. I don't know whether someone can. Uh, verse 17. Eh? It's verse 17. Uh, that's Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let me read it. Uh, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Yes. When you look at the armor of God, the sword is the only offensive. 
mm -hmm. weapon which we can use against mm -hmm. uh, the mm -hmm. devil or to even mm -hmm. to further the gospel of God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we can also tie this with Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 mm -hmm. which says that for the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Yes piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts mm -hmm. and intents of the heart. Oh, so the word of God is a tool which we can use in our lives mm -hmm. when we have any challenges, when we need wisdom and knowledge. Yes. Yes. It starts from God's word. God's word is everything for us. Mm -hmm. And I like the analogy. You know, uh, in an armor, if you're going to for war, mm -hmm. There's the offensive and there's the defensive. Mm -hmm. So I like what you've really brought out that it acts as a defense. It is a sword. Mm -hmm. And just picking up from the book 2 Timothy 3, 16, mm -hmm. we're talking of all scripture. Mm -hmm. So this Bible as it is, everything in it was written by the inspiration mm -hmm. of God. None has error. It is pure. It is undefiled. And it is used for reproof, for correction, for instruction, and not just any instruction, instruction in righteousness. righteousness. Mm -hmm. So that is the second you know, uh, step or bit which we can learn more about God. Is there any other way that we can learn more about God? Nature, we looked at nature, and this word, which is the Holy Scripture. Yes, mm -hmm. Justice. Uh, also, spoken word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's very important because when you read now from the Bible, that we know from reading in the Bible, there yes. are many instances where God spoke, mm -hmm. uh, spoke to man. Very true. I mean, uh, uh, Moses was a friend of God, and you can find that in Exodus chapter 34. Mm -hmm. And when uh, he got to a point that, uh, mm -hmm. chapter 33 uh, of Exodus, it says, Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And that is from the New International Version. Yes. And then verse, uh, chapter 34 of Exodus, uh, the Lord says, uh, uh, first of all, he, the Lord descends mm -hmm. and he hides Moses because now because of sin, Moses cannot see God see and God be alive. Like yes. He just wants to protect yes. him. And then he says, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. And it goes on, we studied this verse in the previous episodes. Yes. In short, God can also appear to human beings, mm -hmm. though they may be sinful, but yes. they are on very rare occasions. Mm -hmm. And he appeared even to uh, Mr. and Mrs. Manoah. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, God appeared to Abraham. Mm -hmm. And even uh, in our days, do not be surprised if yes. he appears to you. Yes. But for you to get to that level, uh, it really uh, takes a lot of, you know, communing with him, you know, from the other books, you know, like nature and mm -hmm. the Bible. Mm -hmm. And as a friendship gl uh, grows, yes. then it gets to a point that he says, ah, I just want to be with this person forever, like Enoch was taken up. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the Bible is very clear that there are some of us who are not going to taste death. In mm -hmm. fact, now when Jesus will come back, we shall know him as he is. Yes. We shall see him face to face, no need of the Bible. But mm -hmm. God's word, in essence, even when he speaks, you can get to know him. Great. Mm -hmm. yeah. And maybe for the viewer, because the Bible is vast, we have 66 books. Mm -hmm. I want to consider this as a meal. You know, for a meal you have starter, you have the main course, and you have dessert. What approach should we take? Because you know you can have a meal and not knowing what portion to eat, what time to eat. How best then do we need to study scripture so that we are all nourished and nourished fully? Because we can have it and read it casually mm -hmm. as a take home, you know, casual reading. Mm -hmm. What does it take to study scripture? Yes, I think is. I can give my own experience. Please do. I, gave, uh, I think in a previous episode. Yeah where I decided I'm going to read the whole Bible from the beginning to, to the, the end. end in one year or even in less than one year. Yes. And I started with the New Testament. In mm -hmm. like three months I was done. Mm -hmm. Then I went to the Old Testament. Then I reached Ezekiel and decided, let me now remember what I read in Psalms. And I could not remember anything. Yes. Then I discovered it's not about how much you read, but how much you retain. Mm -hmm. So I decided slowing down reading uh, chapter by chapter and trying to remember what I read in that chapter and also verse by verse. Mm -hmm. And when you take your time to read slowly, you get to remember more and God uses those words to speak to you. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So basically you, you don't read it in a hasty manner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It needs to be very, very structured. Mm -hmm. Then maybe the question I'll pose, mm -hmm. upon reading, mm -hmm. do we expect any change? Is it given? I can, okay. I can give an example. Yes. Um, also, it will pick up on the written and spoken word. Yes. So there are two disciples walking to a mouse. Mm -hmm.
Christ joins them and they yeah. don't recognize him. They yes. have no knowledge of him. Mm. And as they are speaking, uh, Christ starts a Bible study mm. from the prophets, from, from Genesis. Yes. And he goes all the way. Mm. And by the time he's done with that study, yes. both spoken and written, mm. they recognize Christ, they know him, yes. and their hearts burn. Yes because of now their eyes are open and they're able to know him for who he is very yeah. true so the effect would be a change in how we see things mm. how we experience things mm. our relationship with him yes mm. yes great yes winnie i think uh, for us to experience the change mm. we must also study prayerfully mm. Mm. and ask for the guidance of the holy spirit mm. this is the word of god and he needs to guide us to give us an understanding so that it can change us, mm -hmm. then it can influence our characters and the life we live. Great, that is true. Prayerful study of God's word. Yes, George. I, I just wanted us to think just a bit further. Mm -hmm. um, Second Timothy 3.16, I believe that's the verse that, uh, that uh, Winnie mm -hmm. shared with us, yes. says that all scripture is inspired. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would want to argue that uh, the prophets, mm -hmm. Joel, when he was writing his his account mm -hmm. that he was allowed to write, mm -hmm. Daniel, mm -hmm. the knowledge they had, as much as they'd had their individual walk with God, mm -hmm. had to come from God revealing through himself through inspiration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we serve a God who says, I am forever the same, mm -hmm. today and forever. Mm -hmm. And so I would like us to also consider the possibility that even now, God can still inspire. Yes. Mm -hmm. Post the Bible times, mm -hmm. God has inspired others. Mm -hmm. Very true. And um, the, without understanding that God can still do these things, mm -hmm. we shut out a lot of information mm -hmm. that probably would be very useful mm -hmm. for the Christian today. Mm -hmm. God can still speak to you directly. Mm -hmm. God can still reveal himself to you in vision and dreams. Yes. I mean, it's a promise. If you read Joel 2.28, yes. he actually says that in the last days, yeah, I'll pour my spirit and the young men will see visions and yes. the old men will dream dreams. Yes. And he's spoken to us before like that. Mm -hmm. He can speak to us today like that. Mm -hmm. Very true. That is a given assurance that God still speaks to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, even as he speaks, then there's that element of prayerful study. Mm -hmm. And I, I like what you know, we, we are learning, that without prayerful study, then there'll be no meaningful mm -hmm. impact when it comes to an understanding of God. Mm -hmm. Then when all is said and done, and there is a new change, what then is expected of one who's accepted these truths because you see, when uh, you study and you have something good, you just want to share. Mm -hmm. What is expected once you've studied and know more, or rather, known God? Um, okay. Okay. Of course, yes. we've, we've already established yes. spiritual things are spiritually designed. Yes. Yeah. So if we study God's word prayerfully, yes. and um, prayerfully and allowing the Holy Spirit to help, yes. help uh, you know, ha ha us to have mm -hmm. the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. then it will be reflected mm -hmm. um, in our actions. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because then it will, it will not be us mm -hmm. doing things, but God right. working in us both yes. to do and to will to of will. his good pleasure. Thank you. Enoch, five seconds. Basically, I was just saying, uh, when we read the word of God, yes. we need to come with an open mind to yes. learn. Yes. Mm -hmm. Let me not come with any philosophies that are uh, like forming a backdrop mm -hmm. to the when I'm reading yes. so that the Holy Spirit has total influence Very true. so that um, I can uh, assimilate it in my into my life great I count that humility dear viewer in a humble manner we still request you don't change the channel stay tuned we'll be right back after the break Come everyone and join me. First century man understand what it means to be a man. Take a look at society today. Where are the men? Where are the men who stand for integrity and truth? Where are the men who lead their families to Christ, who provide for them and protect them? Are you that man? The ladies have no problem with submission. Ah, the problem is to what are you submitting? 
<laughs> you, you, you can't submit to a vacuum. Wow. Mm. Most of the affairs start with emotional connections. When you are making a choice on morality, don't begin. As the 21st century man, we need to realize that we avoid this reactive kind of approach. Watch the 21st century man. Join the conversation about what it means to be a man in this day and age. 21st century man, from his perspective. Dear viewer, welcome back. We believe that you're still being blessed. Uh, if you're joining us at this second segment, we've been having a study about a knowledge of God. And we've looked at two main lessons of how we can know God. One, it is through nature. And two, it is through the Holy Scriptures. But before we proceed to discuss, I want to invite the team to sing a song that speaks about ancient words. Words which have forever remained true. Words which change you and words which change me. Ancient words. Wow, 
thank you, mm. ancient words, mm. changing me Unchanging and changing you. Mm. And we come with open hearts. Mm. Let these ancient words impart. Mm. So let's go now to the third lesson in this segment of getting to know more about God. We've looked at nature and how God speaks to us through nature. We've established that mm. God made everything mm. that we see and that each which even we don't yeah. see. Mm -hmm. So everything was made by his able hands. Mm -hmm. And we've seen from the book of 2 Timothy 3.16 that God mm -hmm. inspired the writers yeah. to write all the words contained in this scripture. Yeah. So there's still a third element which we can learn or which we can use to know more about God. And which one is that? Uh, well, I think this what we call providence. Yes. yes. Uh, if you remember in the last episode, I shared my story of depression. And I remember during that time, that's when I realized God can speak to you. Yes. Mm. Specifically. I remember this time I was sitting in the house and when I switched on the television, interestingly, it was Hope Channel, which was, uh, was on the screen. Oh, wow. And the person who was talking was talking about depression. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, so how did God know about this? I mean, how did he arrange all this? There must be a God in heaven. Yes. And he spoke about depression mm -hmm. and how he got healed. And I, 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 I got hope mm -hmm. that I can uh, get out of it through the power of God. Yes. And I promised myself that when I get healed, mm -hmm. I'm going to, you know, speak about it. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and say that God is a healer. So providence. Mm -hmm. and, and I said I will testify as much as possible. And now here I am on Hope Channel Amen. testifying. Amen. Hoping Amen. that you might one day come and testify. <laughs> you know, that's how. God, God works, yes. providence. Like yes. He does miracles in our lives. Mm -hmm. Great, very true. Enoch, I, I feel you have a weighty point that <laughs> uh, about the, the element of providence. Uh, it's just the same, but yes. uh, we look at even how we are able to eat every day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We go to um, even how we, we harvest from mm -hmm. our uh, 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 gardens. Mm -hmm. That's God's providence. Mm -hmm. He provides rain. The seed grows, we don't know the sun's how it happens, mm -hmm. all the way to fruition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's, there are many ways. Let me just read Psalms 33. Yes. 33, 5. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of goodness of the Lord. Yes. If you look at everything, you'll always learn something. Mm -hmm. Even how God provides for the sparrow, the birds, mm -hmm. there's a lot. Mm -hmm. We don't understand, mm -hmm. but it, it still happens. Yes. So that's God's providence in one area. Very true. And I think we'll, somebody will open the book. I think it's Matthew where Jesus was speaking to a multitude and he told them, look at the air yeah. mm -hmm. of uh, the birds, yeah. the birds of the yeah. air. Yeah. You know, they never sow. Mm. Yeah. They never reap. Mm. But God provides. Right. Mm -hmm. The same he spoke about the flowers. Uh -huh. In all its beauty and grandeur, mm -hmm. none mm -hmm. can even compare, or rather, even Solomon with all the temple and his magnificent oh. and the glory, can, none can compare to how God provides mm -hmm. for, for nature. Mm -hmm. So those are two uh, elements. So we've looked at scripture, we've looked at uh, God's providence, and then we've also looked at nature. Mm -hmm. But let's now look at scripture, because at times you'll find people come with man-made philosophies. Mm -hmm man-made feelings, man-made theories. How then can we distinguish between that which is man-made and that which comes from the inspiration of the Holy Spirit? Yes, Darius, please. Uh, for me, there's a Bible pr principle which I normally use, which is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Maybe someone can read it, but as we go there, uh, this scripture normally helps me to discern whether uh, something is true or not mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so i normally run it uh, uh, whatever i'm experiencing i normally run it through that through that list so okay. someone can read it yeah philippians for it some current it says finally brethren whatever things are true whatever things are honest whatever things are just whatever things are pure whatever things are lovely whatever things are of good report if there be any virtue if there be any praise, think on these things. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you see, that's a Bible principle which you can use to make decisions on where to go, uh, who to relate with, and many decisions in life. You can use such a verse or any other verse in the Bible okay. yeah, like to discern okay. what you're asking, to discern between right and wrong. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and there's something Winnie mentioned about careful 
and prayerful mm -hmm. study mm -hmm. of scripture. I want us to build on that. What is this that we need to be careful of and also prayerful? So does it mean I say, let me pray in Jesus name, amen, mm -hmm. then just open any scripture. Can we help you viewer to come with something like a guide or we borrow from our experiences, how we've carefully and prayerfully studied scripture in order for us to know more of God? Um, something that stands out for me yes. um, about God's word mm -hmm. is its consistency. Mm -hmm. There are few people who may claim contradiction, mm -hmm. but if you study every single aspect of it in context, mm -hmm. yes. consistency all along. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to read from Isaiah 28, verse mm -hmm. 9 and 10. I'll highlight 10, yes. but I'll read 9 for context. Um, whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Mm -hmm. Them that are weaned from milk and drawn from the breast. Mm -hmm. 10. For precept must be upon precept, yes. precept upon precept, <coughs> line upon line, line upon line, here a little mm -hmm. yeah. and there a little. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so even as we are prayerfully studying God's word, mm -hmm. then we know to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. We know to have a study of God's word from the Old Testament, the New Testament. Mm -hmm. We look across the inspired word. Mm -hmm. um, and if we are to look at even supplement, complementary, mm -hmm. complementary um, inspired writing, yes. then we will see the same fruits mm -hmm. and the same consistency mm -hmm. in any other inspired writing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You test whatever it is and if it aligns with the Bible, yes then it is true. Mm -hmm. I, I take that comfort. A little here, a little, a little there. there. You know, looking at, for instance, in the practice of law, all law subsidiary legislations anchor on the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But the good thing, the Bible needs no other superior mm -hmm. law or interpretation. However, even as we study from one verse, one chapter, more light mm -hmm. or more elaboration and explanation can still be found mm -hmm. in another uh, part of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Yes, great. Yeah. Just I, I wanted just to mention uh, what Karen has mentioned is very important because now you have people who are doing very many things because uh, crazy things because they uh, depend very much on providence mm -hmm. or uh, say the spirit has you know led me in a certain way mm -hmm. so that you have people doing crazy things uh, in the name of religion you know mm -hmm. some people are being made to eat grass mm -hmm. and uh, at the end of the day you're saying that well this is the Holy Spirit who has led me. Mm -hmm. So how do we strike that balance? Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll just want to point to one of the prophets in the Bible. Yes. Uh, his name was Daniel. Uh, Daniel means uh, God is my judge. Yes. Uh, and uh, Daniel, when you read uh, uh, chapter 9 mm -hmm. uh, of Daniel, it says uh, from verse, um, verse uh, 1, uh, in the first year of Darius, son of Ahasuerus, of the lineage of the Medes, who was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, mm -hmm. in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by the books the number of the years specified by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah the prophet, mm -hmm. that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. Yes. So, in essence, Daniel was asking some questions. When are they going to go back? When are they going to go back? But for uh, what resulted to that burden is that the scripture is the one that took precedence. Mm -hmm. That is, he studied from the book of Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. And by studying from the book of Jeremiah, so by the time he's being shown the visions, they're just confirming what he has already he's studied. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the day, the test is to the law and to the testimony. Yes the Bible, if somebody doesn't speak according to what is in the Bible, then he is a liar. Okay. And, and, and that's, that's, a, that's a secret. Mm. Great. V very true. Another, yes, another, a very direct one yes. we find in the book of John, mm -hmm. actually First John, mm -hmm. uh, verse f uh, chapter 4, verse 2, that says, Hereby we know the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the mm -hmm. flesh is of God. Mm -hmm. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh mm -hmm. is not of God. God. Mm -hmm. yes. And if and this is that spirit of Antichrist where have whereof you have heard that it should come. 
and even now already is in the world. Yes. Mm -hmm. Basically, when we're talking spirit here, we, we could include thoughts and even um, paradigms of thought generally. You have people who would claim very different things. Mm -hmm. And there, there's even movements within Christianity that do not accept that Christ was fully mm -hmm. in the flesh. Mm -hmm. And we, the Bible is very clear about that right mm -hmm. now. It tells us that is not of God. Mm -hmm. However persuasive it might be, mm -hmm. that thought might be, mm -hmm. anyone who, desi uh, who, who de denies Yes. Christ mm -hmm. is not of God. Of God. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So there cannot be a strife in God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. There cannot. There can never be a strife. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at Winnie and uh, Karen uh, in the medical field, you know, you people read very huge books, so I hear, and they are written specifically for medics. But when, let me pose the question could it be that the Bible was written for the elites, or is it possible that anybody and anyone can read and understand Scripture? So scripture is meant for everyone. Mm -hmm. We should not take what someone else tells us as truth. Mm -hmm. We should, it should be upon us to study and learn for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Very yeah. true. So basically it means scripture was written for everybody. Yeah. It was designed even for the common people. Yeah. And it will be very clear just as the light is on a noonday time. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes, Karen. Um, you see, saying that it's too complex mm -hmm. also is the or, um, saying that I can read it because I'm a complex brain, mm -hmm. both extremes would assume that you're understanding it by your mind. Mm -hmm. So there's one mind that can't understand it and there's one complex mind that can understand it, would be to rely on our own strength in understanding God's word. Yes. Mm -hmm. When we study God's word, we need to come to it with a humility mm -hmm. in acknowledging that it is him who helps us interpret it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's from the simple, whatever that would mean, to mm -hmm. the most complex of minds, mm -hmm. whatever that would mean in these standards. Mm -hmm. All of us can understand it in the exact same way as the Spirit leads us mm -hmm. and inspires our minds. So it's not pegged on human strength, no. mm -hmm. but pegged on the Holy Spirit's yeah. guidance. Yeah. Yeah. And then the verse for that is uh, John chapter 14, verse 26, which says, But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things mm. and bring to your remembrance all things that mm. I have said to you. Very so true. he's a teacher. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So he teaches us and leads us to all truths. Mm -hmm. Given in our academic or rather day-to-day -day learning, we read the newspapers to be enlightened about the daily activities in the political and economical sector. Mm. Be it academic, we, need, we, we study the books, mm. not just to gain knowledge, but also pass our examination. Mm -hmm. Apart from the spiritual realm and understanding more about God, are there other benefits that accrue to the study of Bible? Will you be ennobled intellectually? or it will just be about heaven and heaven alone. I'm not, and I'm not suggesting that, especially to you here, that that's not enough. That's the prime and the supreme objective as to why we study, to know and to commune with God. Mm -hmm. But can we accrue other benefits when we study God's scripture? Yes. Yes, George. That's the simple answer. Uh, now we elaborate. Second Timothy 3.16. Yes, please. We have read it, and now I'll read verse 17 after. Yes. But I'll just connect the two so that you see the continuity. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, mm -hmm. thoroughly furnished, and to all good works. Mm -hmm. The Bible does not exclude any good work. Mm -hmm. All of them are included. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter your profession. It doesn't matter if you're a mechanic like I am. Mm -hmm. But if my work is going to be good in the shop, mm -hmm. the word of God will help me do that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. if, if, if I'm going to be a good pianist, mm -hmm. then the word of God will help me do that. Mm -hmm. There are principles we learn, mm -hmm. sometimes in parables, sometimes in stories, sometimes in direct speech mm -hmm. in the Bible that work to enable us to be perfect mm -hmm. and to all good works. Great. Mm -hmm. So it's an all-inclusive passage, not mm -hmm. bed and breakfast alone <laughs> or half board. This is all-inclusive. Yes, sir. Allow me to also just uh, reinforce what uh, George has said. Mm -hmm. If you read uh, Proverbs 1, 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, mm -hmm. but fools despise wisdom, wisdom and instruction. Mm -hmm. It's still the same. When we know more about God, we're actually growing intellectually. Yes. Knowledge. Yes. Yeah. 
I wanted to make it practical. There's somebody seated there and you're so broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what should you do? Yes. Because many people worry about money. Yes. And there's many verses like uh, uh, Matthew 6.33. But let me read one in Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. This is very practical. Uh, uh, 11, Ecclesiastes 11 says, Ship your grain across the sea. This is a new international version. After many days, mm -hmm. you may receive a return. And then verse 2, very important. Invest in seven ventures. Yes, in eight. You do not know what disaster may come upon the land. Mm -hmm. Most of us have one source of income and 20 sources of uh, uh, 20 ways of spending the money. <laughs> so the Bible is saying invest in seven. You don't have only one uh, way of getting money. Yes. Invest in seven because you never know when mm -hmm. trouble will come. So it can help you get money. Yes, mm -hmm. very true. Practical lessons. And the verse that is alluded to 633, the book of Matthew says, seek but seek ye first the kingdom, the kingdom, kingdom of, of God, God and all its righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And you know that's a build up from what I had stated earlier about God feeding the birds, yeah. providing for nature and all that. And we are coming to the tail end of this. But I have can I have oh, okay, yes. please uh, Darius then uh, <laughs> I, know, I like that. Please Darius. Yes. Okay. Darius. Yes, first. Darius. Okay, please. so this one is from Daniel chapter 1 mm. verse from verse 12, mm -hmm. uh, it says, please test your servants for 10 days and let them give us vegetables to eat mm -hmm. and water to drink. Mm -hmm. Then let our parents be examined before you mm -hmm. and the appearance of the young men yeah. who eat the portion of the king's delicacies and as you see fit, mm -hmm. so deal with your servants. Mm -hmm. So he consented with them in this matter and mm -hmm. tested them 10 days. Mm -hmm. And at the end of 10 days, their features appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portions of mm -hmm. the king's delicacies. Yes. So on to what George was saying on principles of the Bible gives you, this is a principle on the diet God mm -hmm. prescribes for yeah. us, which mm -hmm. is a, a plant-based diet mm -hmm. or a plant-strong diet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. you can see these young men did a 10-day test and yes. their features appeared better. They, were, mm -hmm. they looked stronger. Yes. And even when you, look at the, when you look at the natural world, yes. you see that the largest animals mm -hmm. are vegetarians. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the elephant. Yes. And in addition to that, yes. when you read verse 20 of the same chapter, it says that, mm -hmm. and in all matters of wisdom mm -hmm. and understanding about which the king examined them, mm -hmm. he found them 10 times better, better. better. Mm -hmm. yes. than all the magicians and astrologers. Mm -hmm. And in addition, God also gave one of them uh, the gift of prophecy and interpreting interpretation of yes. dreams. Mm -hmm. Great. So yeah. scripture covers everything from our diet to our lifestyles and even the relationship mm -hmm. between not only God but between fellow man. Mm -hmm. Enoch, please give us the last uh, take home. Yeah, I don't want to overdo yes. but uh, in the book of Proverbs we have very many life uh, like tools for life. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, if you are, if uh, you have, you've never read the word of God, start with Proverbs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learn how to live, the wisdom to live on earth. Mm -hmm. I can mention like uh, Proverbs seventeen twenty two. A merry heart does good like medicine, yes. but a broken spirit rises up the bones. Yes. How to live, how to manage stress. Mm -hmm. In these days we are living in, and there are so many other principles regarding debt mm -hmm. and how to, to free yourself from being a, mm -hmm. a servant to somebody. So I think they are very, very practical. Yeah. If it's your first time, mm -hmm. they are all in the book of Proverbs. Mm -hmm. yeah. true. Thank you, dear viewer. There is nothing more calculated to strengthen the intellect than the reading or the study of scripture. Mm -hmm. No other book can elevate your thoughts and to give you vigor to the faculties as the broad enabling tools of the Bible. And we just want to engage you. I just want to pose two questions and I want you just to text the response on the number below on your screen. And the first question I will pose is, what are God's lessons from the books which we have studied in scripture? What are God's lessons books? So what lessons do we derive from the scripture. And the second question is, what is the ultimate textbook that we ought to read? And to sum it up, I want us to affirm the message that scripture, nature, and providence are some of the steps that enable us to know more about God by making use and singing together the song, Unimbie tena neno lauzima. Sing them over to me, wonderful, beautiful words of life. Please, let's join in singing this song.
viewer, we've studied more of God and we can only learn of Him and also about Him by a careful and prayerful study of His Word. Mine is to invite you to be diligent, continue trusting in Scripture, for all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching and edification of your soul. See you next week and God bless you. Money, money, money.